So this is now deploying. Once it's finished deploying, we'll have the name service, which we can then add in Namecheat to send the domain to the right place. So I just gave that a couple of minutes and that's now gone through and we have name service. So now we copy those and go back to Namecheap. Now again, great thing about using the easy blog networks, it puts it on Cloudflare in this case. So you get all the advantages of using Cloudflare. I've got another video on that, but basically you've got unique IP address. It looks like this website is hosted on a separate server, which isn't really a big deal for most of you who are just looking to start a local business. But if you're like me operating a large network of sites, then you do want to try and isolate them to their own hosting packages. So now we go to our domain in Namecheap and it currently says Namecheap basic DNS. We change that to custom DNS and we put in those name servers we've been given. So what this does is it sends all the traffic that goes to that domain name to our hosting. So as with all DNS changes, that can take up to 48 hours to take effect. Generally, it's much less than that normally, sometimes just a few minutes. So that should update here and then we can simply click on login. That seems to have gone through very quickly. So we have access to the front end and also the WordPress dashboard. This is where the magic really happens. So next, just for the time being, I'll probably just put a basic theme on. So we go to themes, add new theme, and we can probably find the cleaning business theme. Generally, I think people overthink themes. You don't really want a template that everyone else has got. Generally, I'd say build your own page design using Elementor. But as we can see, those are good ones for cleaning. I quite like that one. Let's just install that. These are pretty much all have paid upgrades, but it's very rare for me to actually buy a premium theme. Again, probably got way too many bells and whistles than you actually need. It doesn't seem to be showing on the front end. So I think first I need to customize it. So it looks like theme options panel. So it looks like we've basically got to build the theme ourselves. Okay, this is just annoying me because the whole point of getting a pre-built theme was I didn't actually want to have to design anything at this stage. We just want to put text on a page because that's what's going to enable us to rank on Google. Let's try this one and visit site. Let's see. Looks like this one's struggling too. I think just because there's no content on the, actually on the site. So let's skip that for now. Let's just go straight to Elementor and build the page. So for that, we go to plugins and then add new plugin. And I've got premium access to Elementor. So I've used this number of times before, so I can just grab it there. But in your case, if you haven't used it before, you can just go to the Elementor Elementor website. I'm actually making this more complicated than it needs to be. This is just because I've got the premium version of Elementor. So we'll activate that for now. But you can actually just get started with the free version. If you're just doing a single page homepage, then you don't really need more than the free version at this stage. So let's go to add new plugin. And even though I've got the pro version, I still need the free version anyway installed on the site for it to actually work. So what this does is I'm always pushing back on people saying, I don't know how to build a website. I don't know how to code. I've got to use Wix or Squarespace. And I'm always saying, don't do that. <laughs> Just use WordPress. It's free. You're not trapped into a system. If I want to take this off Easy Blog Networks and move on to a different host, a better host, then I can do that anytime. I can use all these open source tools and themes. Whereas if you're using a Wix or a Squarespace, you are trapped within that ecosystem. And although they have lots of pros, they've also got lots of cons. Whereas WordPress is nice and open, developers can tweak it however you like, and it's free. So right now I'm just using free plugins. All I've paid for so far is domain name and hosting. Now I've already got an account, you'll have to create one. On the subject of expenses and hosting, also don't forget the Wix and Squarespace platforms, they'll basically lock you into their hosting as well which obviously they have a markup on. Whereas a lot of my websites are on just on a Namecheap shared hosting package where I pay $10 a month and I host a huge load of sites on there. Now we're going to switch this over to the hello theme, which is Elementor sort of base theme. We're going to stick with the name of Cleaners Enfield. Okay, we need the logo. ChatGPT time. Give me a logo for Cleaner Enfield. Let's see if ChatGPT knows that that's Enfield the place and not motorbikes or anything like that. Okay, I'm happy with that. Doesn't really do anything special, but so now we just drop that in here and that then become the logo of the site. And we can actually choose a professionally designed template. So same again, it's easy to get confused. We've talked about WordPress, we've talked about Elementor. Elementor is basically built for WordPress, but it itself is basically this open source software with lots of collaborators. Let's try local. So some people have built these templates for Elementor to go on WordPress. And you can also go out there and basically buy a ready-made template. Local services wireframe, I quite like that one. So we'll apply that kit. So now we should already have a better looking website. It'll all be filler text, but that's fine for now. Notice the website still says not secure. That's because we're still waiting for the HTTPS to kick in from Easy Blog Networks, but that will be sorted. So I'm always shocked when I meet people at conferences how yeah, they've just left their day job or thinking about leaving the day job and they're saying, ah, but I need a website. And they're thinking I've got to pay five, 10 grand to a web developer. And you really don't. Just follow these steps. You can, I can get a website live 
in a matter of minutes. Let's now see that live. Okay, so obviously it doesn't look great, but it's a start. It looks like a real website and the logo's a mess, but who cares? So now we just do edit with Elementor. Like I say, Elementor is a page builder. So people get confused with WordPress being a content management system, it's all these different fields and it gets confusing. How can I simply drag and drop stuff like I do in Wix and Squarespace? So the answer is use Elementor and we're always going to open in Elementor, not just edit the page directly. So let's just change this to expert cleaning Enfield. I see loads of businesses making the mistake of saying with the cheapest, with the best value. You don't want to compete on price, you want to compete on quality. Competing on price is a race to the bottom and the kinds of clients you'll get out of that won't appreciate quality, they just want the cheapest. So it's not the way to build a business. So we want to try and appeal for people who want the right cleaner for the right job, because we're going to make sure when we're actually hiring, we get really good cleaners. And don't really need text there. Now, how do we fix that logo? We go to the header, let's save that. And then we should be able to just here, go to style, and we bring that width up. And currently it's confined by that little box. So we want the max width to be bigger as well. Because we're using this template, it's got all these preset values, which we don't really want. So that's better. I know it's basic, but we've only been going a few minutes. Any changes in Elementor, we just click update at the bottom here. Now we want a big image here. Now give me a hero image cleaner in Enfield with a happy customer. Let's see how this goes. Normally I'd just say slam a stock image in there but it's more fun if we can do it with ChatGPT. Okay, that'll do. I was kind of hoping for more photorealistic than cartoony, but it looks sort of trendy and modern. We can see the London skyline in the background. This is not inaccurate. Enfield is basically parks and terraces with a view of the city in the distance. So I am happy with that. I'm actually not going to save the image. And instead, I'm simply going to screenshot it. That's for two reasons, because one is it's faster, but also the images in ChatGPT from Dali are actually really big and heavy, whereas the screenshots tend to be quite small. I've changed my Mac setting so that all my screenshots are JPEGs because they're much smaller files than PNGs. What I'd normally do in this case, especially if I'm talking to a client, I tend to get a bit lax on my own websites, but we then go to tinyjpeg, Dot com where we can take that screenshot and compress it. This is how we ensure maximum site speed because we're currently up to 268 KB, which is pretty good going. And we've now got it down to 159. So we can download that. And now that template we down already got an image box here. So let's go back to editing the page rather than editing the header. And now I think this container has basically got a background image set. So for that, we go to style and then image. We can see it there. So we can delete the placeholder that's in there now. And instead, we can now upload the AI image we created. So for that, we go to downloads and grab our compressed version from TinyJPEG. So that should now be a very lightweight, fast image. Okay, so this is already looking pretty good. So for services here, and here we'll probably talk about different use cases, probably talk about things like end of tenancy. And we can go through Ahrefs and find other niches within cleaning, not necessarily in Enfield, but within the cleaning industry as a whole. I know people in this industry have specialized in biohazard cleaning and construction cleaning, which all sound like really small niches, but they say those contracts are so high ticket, it really works out for them. Now, it's a different use case to the kind of people we're going to be hiring and training. We just want to do straight domestic cleaning in this case. But don't underestimate the value of those niches. But I'm going to leave all this for now, because what I do want to do right now is just get some SEO content on here. So this page will actually rank on Google. So for that, I want to go back to our main keyword, which is cleaners Enfield. And we're going to go to Surfer SEO. Now, Surfer SEO is a correlational SEO tool where it will take our keyword and look at the top 10 for that keyword and crunch all the data to work out what is Google really looking for? What is Google rewarding in the top 10? Normally, when people start a WordPress website, they'll download something like Yoast or Rank Math, which are good tools for a variety of reasons, but they'll also rely on those little recommendations at the bottom where they say, use the keyword four times and write 400 words. That doesn't cuss it anymore. You want to tailor your content to the content that's already ranked on Google, which we'll probably find is probably much longer than 400 words and doesn't just use this keyword a few times, but all kinds of different entities. So we change the location to London, UK, and it's now creating that template. So while we wait for that, I'll just show you the standard SEO tool approach. So if we go back to WP Admin, anytime you're editing in WordPress, if you delete everything else and you just go to your domain slash WP dash admin, then that will take you to your dashboard. It'll also take you to the login page if you can't work out how to find the back end of your WordPress. So here we go, let's add a new plugin. I've been meaning to do a side-by-side -side comparison of Yoast and Rank Math. So I actually use Rank Math on most of my sites. So let's install Yoast on this one and I can then show you side-by-side -side in a separate video. But this is the one, we'll just install that. Of course, you want to be aware of installing too many plugins, but generally a few foundation plugins are not a problem. Currently, we've just done Elementor and Yoast. We probably don't really need much more than that. So 
website first time configuration we might as well tick there recommended optimization the site's tiny so there's not much to actually scan site representation so yes it's an organization yes that's all correct so this one the benefits of using a tool like that it stretches your data in the correct way so we've got this site logo but we want to make sure that it appears in the right places so when so someone searches cleaners enfield we want that icon to appear here and not just a blank space like this and we also have the icon in the tabs as well because obviously you know that's wikipedia that's namecheap that's ahrefs so we want to get that in as well so not a big fan of the current logo but it'll do for now and we can always change it later social profiles haven't done those yet personal preferences nope if you are looking for good seo tips then go to seojesus.com there's a big red button at the top that says ranking revelations newsletter and if you sign up there i'll send you my very best insights and then finish configuration so really very simple there but what you'll find is if we go to post and then add new post we will then have this yoast box at the bottom now i'm keen to see if this has actually changed in the last few years because i've not touched this in a long time but normally it says the recommended minimum of 300 words now that could be applicable to an e-commerce site where you have a little product description but generally I've not written a 300 word blog post for years now that we've got that surfer template generated we'll find out how long this page actually needs to be so we can open that here and we can see this is recommending between 1526 and 1755 words so that's based on our competitors here so the vast majority of the competition is more than 500 words so that's why I say take the Yoast recommendations with a pinch of salt I've literally had sales calls with clients who say Thank you for the SEO recommendations. We went through the Yoast uh, recipe at the bottom and we made sure we did everything we can to get a high score. That score isn't based on anything. That's some metrics Yoast made up. It's a really good tool for the reasons I've shown you. It'll do all the backend work. But in terms of the actual content, you need to look at your competitors. So that's why I rely on this content score. We can see our average competitors are 60 and the top result is 75. So step one is the correct title, which is Cleaners Enfield. We want the H1, the main heading, to actually include our target keyword. That already gets us a bit of a score. But now what I do is I copy all of these recommendations. Next, we go to ChatGPT. And now I say, write a long form homepage, optimize for the term Cleaners Enfield using the following entities, the number of times indicated after zero slash. So now we've given those requirements to ChatGPT, it will try and write our homepage content using those requirements. So that's very good getting all the individual locations in there. Deep cleaning, tendency cleaning, this is all good stuff. Because remember what Google's really looking for is a really comprehensive article that ticks all the boxes, covers all the right. Now we'll generally find that the standard G chat GPT output is not long enough for the surfer recommendations. If we copy that, we can go to our surfer template, paste that in. So I've already got a content score of 61, which is above the average of 60. This is the great thing about local SEO, where generally your competitors don't really tend to have a clue, they've not focused on it much. But we want to be above the top, which is 75. And part of the reason for that is we've not done enough content. We've only done 500 words. So to fix that, we can just say, keep writing. Generally, I like to start with the prompt in the first place and just say, start writing a long form blog post. I will then prompt you for the next part. But in this case, it's not a massively long article. So I think simply saying, keep writing works. ChatGPT is now gonna add a load of filler, basically our commitment to excellence, our tailored cleaning plans, serving Enfield with pride, environmentally friendly cleaning, so generally, if you just ask ChatGPT to keep writing, it's capable of going away and working to actually fulfill that word count. So now we can copy all of this. Okay, so now we're up to 70, but we want to be 75. So for that, we can click this button that says insert terms, where Surfer itself will go through and try and add in as many of the terms as possible. Fundamentally, we're still lacking some content. We also don't want two H1s on the page, so careful of that when coughing from ChatGPT. Now for these, I just do accept, accept, accept. And now we're up to 80. So we should be beating all our competitors on the basis of the on-page content quality. So there's only one competitor with 75, and we're blowing them out of the water now. So I'm just now going to take all this and go to our homepage because it is the homepage where most of these do seem to actually be a separate location page. 
But in our case, we've got the domain name uh, Cleaners Enfield. So therefore we want a page of content to rank our homepage for Cleaners Enfield. So now we want to go back to Elemental. So you can see how all this was much more granular, much more detailed than just these requirements from Yoast. So let's do that. We'll go back to the home page. You edit with Elementor at the top. Now I'm just going to come to the bottom. All of this is all about sales. But in terms of actually ranking the page, I'm going to put the text further down here. We're not bothered about anyone actually reading it. This is just for Google. So we take the text editor widget, add it in there. And it's in here that we paste our long form content. So that way humans see the nice, nicely designed homepage, the contact us button, all the stuff designed to convert and sell them. We'll also put more prominent calls to action of get a quote up here, but Google can see all this comprehensive content talking about the subject with all those related keywords and entities that shows how comprehensive